side of the offense. And he just comes right through when, when Guy McIntyre pulls out of there. So when Guy McIntyre abandons the space, Bankson takes advantage of it with his quickness to get himself into the backfield. Loss of two, second down and 12. Eight seconds left on the play clock as Pete changes up the formation on the line. Quick throw, Calvin Williams met immediately at the 43. Dropped by Lance Brown, a gain of six. That was a nice, quick decision by Rodney Peake. Quick because he had someone on him almost instantly. Bankston, again, taking advantage of abandoned space, using his acceleration to get into the backfield. And I believe that Pete made the right decision because he threw that ball out at those cornerbacks. Don't forget, Aeneas Williams is not in the game for the Arizona Cardinals. They are weak at the cornerback position. Third down and six for Philadelphia. Big blitz coming, aired out for Monk. Art Monk inside the 30. Carlos Brooks beaten on the play and a gain of 30. That's his third catch of the day. Pete's doing the same thing again. He's getting the pressure. Seth Joyner comes off the left side here to get the immediate pressure on Rodney Pete. Pete lays it up there very nicely. And whenever you've got a guy like Art Monk who's been around the league for 16 years against a young guy like Carlos Brooks, that's a battle you expect to win. That's a ball you want to put up. Now on first down, Ricky Waters. He has not had much room all day. Brought down just behind the line of scrimmage. We'll say he got back to the line of scrimmage, second down and 10. Well, we talked earlier about how Arizona's defense is ranked last in the NFL against the run. But in, in recent weeks, in the past few weeks, they've really been outstanding against the run. They've had Swan back in, they've had Hill back in, and if you look, in the last five games, if you measure that alone, they have been fourth against the run. Now on second and 10, Pete, incomplete for Barnett. And again, Rodney Pete ends up on his back. Well, that time, Terry Irving wasn't taking any chances at all. Because that time, when the receiver went up the scene, Irving stayed with him all the way, even though he had some help from Brent Alexander over the top. The Eagles right now are right on the outer limits of field goal range for Gary Anderson. His long this year is only 43 yards. There's a lot of wind to deal with at this end of the field, and if he were to try the field goal, it would be into that wind. Penalty flag as it looked like one of the Eagles wide receivers left too soon. Well, it looked to me like Reggie Johnson didn't know if he was supposed to be on the line or off the line, and there was some confusion between him and the Players wide receiver. Snap, 12 start, 81 offense, five yards, repeat third down. They get Rob Carpenter for the infraction. And once again, this is a function of this West Coast offense. See here, somebody's got to be, it's supposed to be up on the line of scrimmage. One of those two receivers, Reggie Johnson sees it, he moves, those guys are looking, they move. So it's, it's a function of, again, being so complicated that sometimes you end up getting penalties. And right now they are, because of that penalty, outside of field goal range. Third down and 15. Incomplete. I, I've got to tell you that Rodney Pete has taken a beating today. He has taken a beating from this Arizona, Arizona defense. And Arizona has put a beating on Rodney Pete not by blitzing, not with the all-out blitz, but with four-man rushes. And you see it there. Joyner gets a hit on him and knocks him down again to that hard turf. Well, now they bring in Gary Anderson, who will try what will be a season-long field goal. He'll try a 48-yarder. His long this year is 43 yards. So a test with a 14-year player from Syracuse. Block. Block and returned by Alexander to the 35. And the Eagles come up empty. A key penalty mixed in. And the field goal blocked by the Arizona defense. And that's always a danger when you're going for a long kick that may be on the long end of your range. 
you lower the trajectory, and when you lower the trajectory, those guys up the middle get their hands up and knock it down. Looked like it might have been Eric Swan. Arizona still by six. Eric Swan got that big hand up and blocked the field goal try by Gary Anderson. The crowd somewhat back into the game, but for the most part, pretty quiet. Just a six-point Arizona lead. Two tight ends to start with. Penalty flag on the play. As the handoff to Hurst up the middle got about three. I think back to the, the field goal block, when you see a starter like Eric Swan playing that way with that kind of intensity on special teams, it tells you about the motivation level of an entire team. Offside, 90 defense, five yards, repeat first down. Ronnie Dixon called for the offside, back to the block. Yeah, here it is, right in here, and Eric Swan's a star, but he's a star, and he's still giving everything he's got, leaping up, pushing into the big guys in the middle, and knocking this ball down. I mean, it's easy to stand in there and just push and shove and then just let him kick the field goal. It's difficult after a whole game starting to get in there and make that leap. First and five, and Craig throws it downfield and out of bounds. For the most part, Dave Craig, who has taken more hits than any quarterback in the NFL this season, has had time to look at the Philadelphia defense and find an open receiver. He's had some pretty good time, and the Cardinals have done a pretty good job of keeping a lot of guys in to block and to give him that protection. Now, the problem is, it's, a, it's like anything in the game of football. You give something here, you have to give up something there. So they give more protection. Guys in protection, they give up guys' receivers out in the pattern. Now, second down and five. Chad Fan lines up in the backfield for Arizona. Hurst. William Thomas after a gain of one. Third down coming up for Arizona. But Kirk Ovea just left a calling card with Chad Fan. Fan is the lead blocker on this play, and Govea just accelerates from the middle. And watch this. This is this is hitting in the NFL. We've seen Govea make more than one of these hits today. Just slams Fan right backwards, and that's why Hurst has nowhere to go. Last week, Govea, a big hit and a big forced fumble on Emmett Smith. This, outside of that fourth down stop, may have been the play of the game. With Dallas in close, Govea forces the fumble. Now third and four, and it's intercepted by William Thomas. That's his sixth of the year, and the Eagles get another turnover. I said right in the beginning of the game that Dave Craig wants to be aware of where William Thomas is, and you want to throw away from him. Because you see 51, and you're thinking linebacker, and you're thinking the reaction of a linebacker, but what you get is 51, you get a linebacker, but you get the reaction of a defensive back and he makes a break on this ball. He twists himself backwards and shows great athletic ability. And what he shows you there is what Ray Rhodes smiles about, great hands. Yeah, he says Rhodes told us yesterday that, we're, that he's got the best hands on the entire team. But the offensive coaches wanted to play him at tight end. So the Eagles get it back at the Arizona 45, and Ricky Waters to the 41, that's it. Still four minutes left in the third quarter. Arizona leading by only six. William Thomas is one of the only guys I've ever heard of where the head coach said to him, hey, stay out of the weight room. Stay out of the weight room. I mean, whoever hears that anywhere in sports. But Ray Rhodes said, this guy is so naturally physically strong, he doesn't need to be in the weight room. I don't want to tighten him up. Second down and six after Waters got four. Back across the middle of the field and complete for Calvin Williams. Now you can see the Eagles trying to roll Rodney Pete out to buy him some time. That's the kind of heat the Arizona front is putting on Rodney Pete. And again, it's they're putting that heat on with just four guys. And the Eagles, the Eagles know those guys are tough and strong. They know they've got a double team swan. They have learned that they've got a double team Clyde Simmons. And then you get Seth Joyner in there rushing from time to time. You see Banks in there. He's been in the backfield. When you get defensive linemen in the backfield, you've got to roll your quarterback out to protect it. Now third and six. In the air and picked off. 
That's Aeneas Williams back into the game, his first series back into the lineup. Up into the air, and the Eagles hand it right back to Arizona. That should surprise no one that Aeneas Williams comes down with this ball, with this interception. A Pro Bowl player, he always knows where the ball is. It's tipped up. He's got his eyes on it, and he brings it down. The two teams trade interceptions. Arizona gets it right back. Runs a short post pattern. When he does, Rodney Pete delivers the ball a little too hard and a little too behind him, and this ball just bounces right off of him, and then Aeneas Williams again brings it down. That is Williams' third interception in two weeks and five for the year. Toss to Garrison Hurst. Breaks one tackle, then another, and crosses the 35-yard line. Mike Mamula really did a nice job of stringing that play out, forcing Hurst to the outside, allowing his other defenders to rally to the ball and make it a no-gainer. You know, Mamula, again, undersized guy, only about 252 pounds, but on that play showing a nice ability to use his leverage to keep the thing on the line. Aeneas Williams with the interception. Last two games, three picks, two fumble recoveries, a lot of tackles. By the way, Garrison Hurst is now 10 yards short of 1,000 for the year. Sideline, Anthony Edwards has a first down at the Arizona 45. Michael Zordich beaten on the play, gain of 13. Dave Craig, again, you said it, Dave Craig has had some nice time today. And part of that has been the focus on William Fuller on that right side. Now, when they've left Selby on Fuller one-on-one, -on -one, Fuller's been able to make some things happen. But for the most part, they've kept two guys on William Fuller. Two and a half minutes left to play, third quarter. Arizona with the ball and a six-point lead. From their own 45. Airing it out for Rob Moore. Flag on the play, and McMillan will start to argue. Yep. Mark McMillan has to climb up the back of him because of that height differential. And this is where McMillan is at his weakest. When he's behind a six foot three guy, he's only five foot seven, and to compensate for that height differential, he's got to leap. Pass interference, 29 defense. First down. The Arizona Cardinals told us yesterday they believe McMillan can be beaten deep. Yeah. Again, you want to throw the ball against him, and you want to throw it to a high point. And here it is. It's at a high point, and there it is. He just leaps up. It's an excellent call. He's not tall enough to keep his arm off of the receiver as Bobby Taylor was for the Eagles. That's a 44-yard penalty. Sixth penalty of the day against Philadelphia, and Garrison Hurst gets a couple. Gets it inside the 10 to about the 9. I'll tell you, we, you talk about William Thomas and his athletic ability. He pounded Garrison Hurst on that. Now, someone got to Hurst first, but Thomas showed that strength that Ray Rhodes talks about. Thomas, an outstanding athlete, but Rhodes said he walked into the weight room one day, and Thomas, a guy who weighs 220, was benching 450 pounds, and he did a set for 10. That's, that is almost unbelievable. Second down and eight after Hurst got two. To the sideline, Sanders out of bounds at the five. Forced out of bounds by Romanowski. By the way, the Cardinals can get a first down without getting it into the end zone. However, it would be tight. Essentially, they have to get it into the end zone here on third and four. These guys were digging for the football over there when Sanders hopped out of bounds. That's part of I mean, you know, if the ball gets close to you and you're at an NFL game, you've you got to go for it because it's a, it's a heck of a souvenir. Third and four from just outside the four. Hand off to Hurst. Lost the football, recovered by the Eagles. Another turnover, and Wilburn comes away with it. You talk about the crack of the pads. You could hear the crack of the pads 
from all the way up here. You could hear it throughout the stadium.